Hi, this is Dr. Ace there, your YouTube chiropractor, presenting the best results on YouTube. Today we have a special video. I have a 17 year old intern from a high school down the street, senior doing a class project, an English and communication project. He needs to present this in front of his class. I thought it'd be fun to record it and show you guys his questions and our answers. Please be kind to him. Say positive things in the comment section. I hope you guys enjoy this. Love you guys. Hi, this is Dr. Ace there. Um, I am with Brandon today. Brandon is a high school student, a senior, and he's going to uh, high school down the street. He's in an early college class and he is uh, tasked with the idea of an English assignment and a commu communication assignment. Uh, his class does not require this video, but I thought it'd be fun for you guys to see this and he could show it to his class and kind of impress them with being on camera. So he has a bunch of questions he's going to ask me. I thought I'd let you guys watch and so I hope you enjoy this. Brandon, why don't you start us out? What's your first question? Alright, uh, the first question would be, how much can correct posture decrease the pain or discomfort in the body? <sighs> correct posture is only part of the answer. Uh, you have to have the proper treatment to release the ability to have good posture. But posture is a key to maintaining work that I do in this office. So yes, posture is a key component to getting better in this office. Another question. Um, the follow will be, uh, is posture something that can be fixed right away or will it take time and dedication from the patient? <sighs> Again, everybody thinks they have good posture. Uh, if they did, they wouldn't be in my office. So it does take time to change things. It's kind of like going to the gym. If you go to the gym and you uh, want to make your body look different, if you want to carry yourself different, how much time and dedication does that take? It takes time. So yes, you have to work at it and anything good takes time. So yes, it does take time, but it is achievable and it's achievable faster than you think. You just have to have the right focus and right commitment. Does having a major in psychology make a difference in chiropractic? So I have a major in psychology and people say, does that make a difference? Well, I think it makes a difference because all my patients are crazy. So uh, I have to manage the crazy patients because again, I'm joking happily, ha happily and happily, uh, either one of those are words. Um, but uh, people come in, they're crazy from the pain. And so they've been suffering for so long that they come in and they're not really themselves. And so uh, I think a little bit of psychology doesn't matter. Um, am I good at it? I don't know, but uh, it does play a, a role. And every once in a while, some of, my patients, some of my patients tell me, they go, you know, you should double bill me. One for chiropractic and one for psychology. And so, uh, no, I love what I do and the psychology does help a little bit. Uh, would you recommend someone to get a double major or are they better off saving time and money in one major being chiropractic? Uh, good question. Um, I have two majors and I was, uh, I went through college, I did a long way through college because I was, <laughs> I think I was investigating the different things I wanted to do. So I got my psych major first. I don't think it's a requirement to become a good chiropractor. Um, I did it because uh, I wanted to go to UCLA and uh, I also wanted to row. I was on uh, the uh, rowing team there and so it was part of my requirement to get that through. But uh, I was also pre-med so it's most, multiple different majors here. But do you have to? No. What I think is important is you have to have real world experience and you have to be educated enough to speak to your patients. And so uh, I think part of getting the second major would be more just because you're in school longer. Because people who went through school too fast, they became a doctor, but they don't have that real life application to talk to people. So do I think it's necessary? Possibly. Is it required? No. So something like street science, right? Or street smarts. Yeah, street smarts, but it's not just street smarts. It's, it's learning smarts. You know, it's a, a little bit of communication in a uh, more intellectual way. It's not like, hey dude, you smoke pot? No. <laughs> And so you have to keep it a little bit more uh, educational and you learn how to talk to people. And so I think that's important. In your opinion, uh, what would be the best mindset to come with? Uh, as a patient or as a doctor? Um, as a patient. Um, I tell all my patients, come with an open mind because everything you've learned in your entire lifetime is wrong. And I'm right. And so uh, to change all those parameters, to look at all those books, and to hear all those people say things for years and years and years, and your parents sit up, stand up, stop slouching, and all those kind of things, um, all of them are wrong. And so uh, it's hard to change those parameters unless you have an open mind. So open mind is a key component for people to come see me because if they don't have an open mind, they're never going to learn. So yes, very open mind. 
Uh, would you say having a connection with your patient is one of the best ways for a critical learning environment? Uh, many people out there in YouTube land uh, have watched my videos and I do like to mess around. Um, I like to create rapport with my patients. Uh, I personally think it's, it's beneficial because if I kind of feel out somebody's personality, I get through to them more. And so not everybody listens the same way. Uh, I do my best to try to relate to people. Uh, sometimes I miss, and you guys have seen that on YouTube also. But most of the time, I'm, I think I'm kind of on jokes, keeping it light in the room. Um, and I always say that there's a, you have to say everything a million times so somebody can remember one time. So you have to say it a million different ways so people can remember the one key component. And I've said it a million different ways, but they only remember that one time because it's relatable to things that they are. So I think it is important to relate to people. What benefits do adjustments bring to patients other than treating their pain? Um, pain is what people come in for, um, but my work in this office all um, works on balance, and that's why I have this here, guys. So this is a little balance tool my patients play with and try to balance this out later. You guys can come in if you ever see this, you can play with this. <clears throat> um, balance is a key component to treating the body. So when I balance the body, I don't just re re reduce the patient's pain. What I do do is I make the body healthier. And what does that mean? I make the body more apt to work the way God intended. So what else happens when I treat the body? What I do is, by balancing the body, uh, the body simply works better. So organs work better, uh, memory works better, sleep gets better, um, so many different things. Eyesight improves, vision improves. Why? Because when the body is balanced, everything simply works better. So I say I'm not about pain here, I'm about balance. And when I do that, everything seems to come up, do really well. And I have a million symptoms that get better here, and again, it's not just about pain. So it is, there's a lot of other things. Other Do questions? I think people should take, uh, <clears throat> or not like take, but like start in having good habits or practicing those good habits. Uh, again, uh, people always try to have good habits, and if you watch YouTube enough, if you have pain in your back, you've watched a ton of videos. And you're like, how should I stretch? and you watch the stretching video. And I, re I guarantee you'll lose your pain if you do the stretch. You, everybody hears these gurus online. They still walk in my office, why? Because they walk in because those things don't help. So is it good to try? Absolutely, I think it's all about the journey. You have to take the journey to figure out that that stuff's not working so that when you come to me, you change your mindset, you open your mindset to try new things because again, everything you see online is incorrect. So sort of like experimenting with what you see. You have to kind of fail before you can win. And so yes, you should experiment, and yes, you should try. But again, the problem is, is all the information out there is incorrect. So does that mean that you shouldn't try? Hell no, you should try. And so the journey to come here is always a bumpy road. And that bumpy road uh, brings you here in the long run, but that bumpy road is necessary so that you have an open mind so when you come. So all these questions, see how they kind of focus, they kind of come back on themselves, they're all important. Yes. Great question, Brandon. <laughs> I try. Uh, what are some tips that you can give someone to guide them into taking preventative procedures? <clears throat> preventative procedures. Stop self-adjusting. Do not self-adjust yourself. Ice is your friend. Stay away from heat. Hot tubs are the killer of the spine. Heat uh, it causes expansion. Ca expansion causes pressure. Pressure causes pain. Ice, ridic ice shrinks tissues and helps you out. So those are preventative measures. Move me is key. Moving, get out and smell the roses. Don't sit home. If you're in pain, get out of bed. Stop being lazy. Um, all those things matter. Okay, so those are preventative things that you can do on your own. But again, they only can take you so far. If you have an issue, you need a professional doctor to help you with that first. Wait, so just like a quick question. Hmm. Is that why it's always cold when you're like in a medical place? Like at the doctor's, it's always freezing cold or like... I don't know where dentist. this question's going. <laughs> so it's always cold. Why is it? What do you mean? What's the question there? Because I don't know. Every time when I walk into like the doctors, it's always like freezing cold. Um, I think it's freezing cold because like right now I'm hot, and so when doctors start talking a lot and you start moving a lot, I like to be cool. So my office is always colder, and patients come in here and go, "What the hell? Why is your office so cold?" Because I'm freaking hot. So I don't know if there's any reason. I mean, you could talk about bacteria. Bacteria multiply more in heat, but it's and but. Keeping the office cold is not about the patient, it's about the doctor. <laughs> uh, ideally, at what stage should people come with based on their pain? <clears throat> so, um, <clears throat> pain should not be the prerequisite to come in. Um, we say this to patients all the time. If you're in pain, it's usually too late. People usually wait till they're in pain, 
then the pain goes away, and then they alter the way they walk, and then they have other issues that are way beyond the issues that you have when you're um, when you first started. The problem with that is that it becomes a long domino effect where each thing knocks a domino down. So the longer it takes for you to get in here, the harder it is for me to fix. I hope that makes sense. Hi, we had a little technical difficulty. We went out of batteries. And so uh, we're reshooting the last part of this. So if you guys see a little difference and you guys see some things different, um, that's why. So uh, Brandon, why don't you follow up with that other question? Why do you think people tend to come with the, when the pain is at its worst? Towards the end. Uh, they come because they wait too long. And they wait too long, why? Because they go online, they look for all these answers online to find out how to take care of their pain. And um, they're not right. But I mean, you have to do that. You have to go online and you have to go through these, these ideas and you have to try all these things to find out they don't work. And so people do that and that's fine. I want you to do that. They also take over-the-counter medication. That over-the-counter medication um, makes them put off the inevitable coming in here. So when you feel pain, you take some medication, you don't feel pain anymore. It doesn't mean you don't have a problem. I hope it makes sense. And so uh, they also get bad advice from doctors. Like, you're fine, you're fine, you're fine. Also, money becomes an issue in time. So people don't want to take the time to do what they need to do. So people usually put off coming in here because of those reasons. Would you say language can be a barrier? Language can be a barrier, but it's not. Because anybody who comes to me, like I, I have a high Hispanic population here and I don't speak Spanish. I mean, I speak a tiny bit. But uh, it never has stopped anybody from coming in. I have a new staff member that I just hired that speaks Spanish. And he's like, oh, I'm gonna bring so much to your office, it's gonna be so much better because you know, I speak Spanish. And yes, it does. But I've been doing this 25 years and I've never had a problem with, with uh, language barrier. People come from all around the world, speak different languages. If you want to get treated here, you find a way to communicate with me. So that's the bottom line is that no matter what you speak, no matter how you speak, no matter what you say, you're going to tell me it hurts here and I know where it hurts. Okay? Other questions? How is the lifestyle of a chiropractor different than any other medical profession? How is what now? How is the lifestyle? Lifestyle. Yeah. yeah. Again, lifestyle. <laughs> <laughs> he keeps saying it like this is the second time we've shot this one. <laughs> the reason, the, uh, the how is it different? Well, again, chiropractors, we party like rock stars. And why do I say that? Because uh, we have different personalities than medical doctors. Um, chiropractors generally have bigger personalities. We have, we're have more sure of ourselves because this is a hard profession. To get to the top, you have to be able to communicate well. You have to be able to uh, educate. You have to be able to adjust well. You have to be really in coordination of your body. And so um, usually only the best go to the top and the ones that are, that are presenting our profession are the people who have survived. Um, not an easy profession to get into, so again, uh, we probably do things a little bit different than medical doctors. In the medical world, anybody can be a medical doctor. And that's not saying that you guys aren't smart, it's just that there's a whole system out there that allows even the bottom doctors to come to the top. Because there's so much money in the medicine that they rape the system so much that everybody gets paid. And so anybody can be a medical doctor. It's difficult to be a chiropractor. Is taking the road of chiropractic a risky road? Uh, again, I just mentioned this in the last uh, question. Yes, very, very difficult. Um, chiropractic is not easy, not at all. The facts are is that most don't make it. Okay, so when you go to school and you come out as a chiropractor, you can be smart, you can pass all your classes, you can pass the state boards, but the facts are that there's a 75% attrition rate. Only 25% of chiropractors that graduate from chiropractic school with their license are still practicing after five years. So what does that mean? That means most people cannot pay their student loans, most people cannot make it, most people are not making money in chiropractic. And so only a few percentage points of that 25% are actually making it. Again, so I'm not trying to dissuade you guys from being a chiropractor, I'm not telling you that it's not a great profession. I'm in love with my profession. My profession is the best profession ever. I mean, I, I can't even imagine doing anything different, but was it hard in the beginning? Whoo-wee, baby, it was hard. Yeah. Um, I made nothing, nothing for years. And so, am I doing okay now? Absolutely. Do I love my profession? Absolutely, but was not easy. And there's many different, uh, there's many different times that I could have quit. So, very difficult, but again, best profession in the world at where I'm sitting right now. Best profession, I love it. Go ahead. Uh, how does chiropractic <clears throat> compare with balance? Compare? 
Yeah, like intertwined. Mm -hmm. Again, uh, balance is the key in my office. Um, <clears throat> I focus on balance so much that all I do is work, talk about balance. I don't talk about pain anymore. I don't talk about symptoms. I talk about balance. When I balance the body, the body simply functions better. And I always say, all I'm doing is putting back God's work. The way God made it was perfect, and we screwed up somehow by looking at cell phones, by laying in bed incorrectly, by sitting incorrectly, by doing all these things, <laughs> by doing all these things that screw things up. So all I'm doing is putting back what God made. And balance is the key to that. When you have proper balance, your body simply works better. How, so how does in your videos and in real life when you treat a patient, how does that compare to or demonstrate balance? In the videos uh, and my practice, I demonstrate balance all the time. Again, I'm doing things a little different than most chiropractors. Most chiropractors, they talk about pain, where's your pain, look here. I mean, there's a lot of different chiropractors out there that, are, that just want to yank on necks and not to push where the pain is. And there's some rhyme or reason to that. But what I do is something way obscure to most chiropractors. Most chiropractors don't even think this way. So my videos are there to demonstrate how proper chiropractic and balance changes lives. And so I have 400 videos showing this and documenting it. I document it all the time. And that documentation shows, again, how a simple adjustment done correctly exponentially changes spines. And so you can adjust on the pain, place where the pain is. People want it all day long. Can you touch right here, Doc? I refuse because I want them to understand where that balance is the key. When you understand balance is the key, then you focus on taking care of balance, which takes care of your body. That's why I do the videos. So from that, would you say that YouTube is worth the extra work? Uh, I love YouTube. And I don't say that lightly. I love YouTube because it's the greatest forum for truth out there. And what does that mean? I sound like a superhero here. But again, um, YouTube is an amazing forum because I get to do what I do and show you guys, show the world how chiropractic works. There has been a... Um, uh, 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 the, the American Medical Association has tried to kill the chiropractic profession, and so they did it for years. And in 1986, there was a um, Supreme Court decision that uh, went against the American Medical Association and said that they were doing illegal things to get rid of our profession. And so with that said, um, it's over now, but again, there's a lot of misinformation out there about what we do. Tons and tons of misinformation. Okay, so that misinformation is counteracted by the truth of YouTube. I mean, huh, baby, you don't like what I have to say, you move on to the next one. But if there's some truth in my stuff, people watch, people learn, and people could say, oh my God, you mean you can help me with that? I thought that was not going to help me. And so there's a lot of lies out there, and the truth is YouTube. And so um, I, I think it's the best thing ever. So, <clears throat> Considering the message you're trying to promote, is this the future of chiropractics? Uh, we talked about this question a minute ago, <laughs> we already answered this question, but do I think it's the future of chiropractic? I think it's an amazing um, uh, vessel for learning, um, but I think it's kind of like a website. Remember when people have, remember people put print ads in newspapers and like that's how I'm going to get pa uh, patients in here? Uh, and then when they went to websites and then they went to Google and then they went to uh, Instagram and now, and now YouTube. And I, so I think the future is YouTube. But do I think it's long-term future? No, I think it's gonna be for the next 10, 20 years maybe, but there's gonna be something else. And so I am lucky enough to be part of it. I'm lucky enough that I have a huge audience that loves to watch what I do. I freaking love it. I mean, I think YouTube's awesome. And I think the best part about it is the reality of it, is that there's no advertising. It's just me showing you what to do. And if you like me, you stay. If you don't like me, you go. And so the truth of that is amazing. So right now it's the future. Who knows what comes down the pike later. That's it. So I want to wrap this up by saying that uh, Brandon is a wonderful kid. He's 17 years old and he's looking to the future. He found me by whim, just looked me up and uh, I turned him into a videographer now. Um, he was here for the last several months and the last several months he's been a wonderful addition to the practice. He's learned more than most people ever learn here and he just was able to absorb it with an open mind. He absorbed it so much that he came up with these wonderful questions. I hardly helped him at all with them. He did a wonderful job. And so uh, I applaud him and his open mind. He may never become a chiropractor, but he has a wonderful mind to um, be open to new things. So uh, thank you for coming and thank you for the questions. I hope you guys learned a lot from that. 
I really enjoyed doing this and I hope um, you guys leave lots of comments on my site. Tell us what you think about this whole thing. Did you learn anything from these uh, questions and answers? Um, see you guys next time. Thank you. Okay.